welcome to the first Sarah only video. Today we're going to be making some rabbit. It's going to be rabbit roasted with vegetables. Um, really easy recipe um, and I'm going to be using some rabbit that we actually butchered today. If you look farther back in my dad's uploads it, sh it should be the one right before this but I'm not 100% sure. Um, you can see the whole process where we went through and uh, butcher the rabbits and skin them and clean them and everything so if you're interested in that I recommend checking it out before watching this video but for all you people like me who really like to cook and want new recipes especially for stuff that's a little bit different than normal say rabbit um, you should check this out okay so what you're gonna need for this recipe is two to three pounds of rabbit I just have one full rabbit feels about right um, it says half a cup of carrots, half a cup of celery, and half a cup of onion. I'm just going to do a few each, whatever I think looks good, because um, in the end I don't think that part really matters too much. You need, as far as spices go, we need half a teaspoon of thyme. That's what this guy is. We need about a teaspoon of lemon juice. The actual recipe actually called for like grated um, lemon rinds, but I'm just going to use lemon juice. It's probably a little bit different, but I saw some other recipes online that said that um, lemon juice worked really well with it, so I figured, why not try it out? Um, we need one bay leaf, a cup and a half of chicken stock. I'm going to use Boolean cubes. Um, if you have chicken stock, though, that would taste way better. A little bit of oil for frying, and two tablespoons of flour, because we're going to fry it a little bit. Okay, so first step is to chop your veggies, uh, whatever way you prefer. It's a roast, so <clears throat> I don't know, whatever size you like to eat once it's done will work. Okay, next step is to coat your rabbit with flour and then salt and pepper. Um, the recipe only says two tablespoons of flour, so I'm guessing it doesn't have to be a super heavy covering or anything, but um, I need a spoon. Okay, so I don't know, I'll just kind of do this kind of thing. Kind of spread it around like this. Just lightly, nothing fancy really. Okay, and then probably just <clears throat> all right, looks good. Um, just do this for all your pieces, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to brown your meat for about 10 minutes on medium heat. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you want to brown meat in general, uh, no matter what it is. Especially like if you're doing something like a slow cooker type thing, or like a roast, that's what we're doing. Because if you just cook the meat raw in the pan, um, a lot of the flavor kind of seeps out, or else it just doesn't seem to really have much flavor of its own. Um, whereas when you brown stuff, what happens is you get a lot of the, like you put salt and pepper on something and it'll get sort of crusted into the meat itself. So, um, I don't know, in general it's a good idea if you're looking to spice something up that's kind of boring, aka roast, casseroles, whatever. Um, browning is always a good idea. Uh, <clears throat> and the recipe calls for it anyway, so right now we're just going to wait for our oil to heat up and then we will start browning.
Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes now and the rabbit looks nice and brown. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but you know, kind of like brown chicken is what it reminds me of. So, what we're going to do is we're going to move the chicken from the frying pan into a 13 by 9 baking pan. Once you have it in the pan, we're going to put the veggies kind of all over it, kind of like this. Um, the recipe actually suggests to take the leftover oil of the rabbit and um, to uh, fry the vegetables in with like the juice that's left over and stuff, um, which is a really good idea, but I don't really have time for that, so I'm just going to skip that stage. Hopefully the juice that's still left in there when we roast it will uh, still get into the veggies, so that still tastes pretty yummy, but we'll see. Now the final thing that we got to do before we can put this in the oven is we have to get our spices ready. Um, take the pan right here where you cooked your rabbit. Hopefully there's something in there still. I have a little bit. And then we're just going to combine our bay leaf. Looks good to me. Um, our chicken broth. Remember I'm doing bouillon so... Um, it says one and a half cups. I probably will just do two cups because it's easier to just use two cubes than to try to break it up. Uh, so we'll add that in right now. Okay, then we need half a teaspoon of thyme. And finally, about a teaspoon of lemon juice. Okay, we're going to heat this to a boil, and then once it's all warm and mixed together, we're going to pour it over our uh, rabbit roast. Okay, our little broth mixture is boiling now. I have the all the spices mixed up in there. The bouillon cubes have been crushed, so it's pretty, pretty liquidy. So now the next step is just to pour it over your rabbit and vegetable dish. The final step is to cover our rabbit dish. I use tin foil. I think everyone does. <laughs> there we go. And then we have to cook it at 375 for 45 to 50 minutes. Alright, 
it's been 50 minutes, so let's check it out. It smells really good. Ooh, it looks really good. All right, well, I'm just going to wait until Chad gets back, and then we'll taste test it for you. Okay, let's try it. chicken and pork. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> really like white meat too. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it. Mm. Mm. Alright. Yeah, I guess you like I guess that's everything. Thanks a lot for watching.